Section 38 of the Crimes Act, 1958. A person must not commit rape. Penalty, level two imprisonment, 25 years maximum. The existence of a marriage does not constitute or raise any presumption of consent by a person to an act of sexual penetration with another person. Shut up and take it. A sentence I know very well. I could predict it or avoid it and all those damn things that you have to do. And you shouldn't have to do them, ever. It happened continually from the fourth week after I had my daughter. He raped me four times in those two weeks, then continuously for four years. My son was conceived that way. I couldn't move. I was in bed with my foot in a box in plaster. He wanted sex and I said no. He flew out of bed and said, you cold cut of a thing, you're my wife, you will. I think I died that minute. It did happen more than once. It was just his right to have sex whenever he wanted it. And he had a piece of paper to say he owned me. They were the words. I have a piece of paper to say I own you. You do what I say. What I call rape in front of a porno made my whole body sore the next day, trying to keep him off. I consider rape when someone's manhandled, dragged you, and no matter what you do, you can't get him off. Afterwards, I felt absolutely terrible. I felt degraded. I was still in a relationship with him and still had to see him every day and live with him. It only happened once and not again, probably because I didn't say no. Partner rape is a crime, rape is a crime, and it has to be seen as a crime. So it is no longer um, in the private terrain. You know, is he going to come home drunk tonight? And is he going to do this to me? Is he going to do that to me? Not only does she have to worry about him coming home drunk and slapping her, he also has to, she has to worry about being raped as well. I was in a position where I chose between having sex with him or, well, I didn't know what was going to happen. But he was physically violent too, so that's what made me think that if I don't do this, that he may get physically violent. And because I had three small kids, it was just an easier way to go, to have sex with him. This whole idea of rape in the community is, it's the girl walking home from the pub at night time and she gets raped by a stranger at two o'clock in the morning. Whereas, you know, as we know, intimate partner rape far outweighs any of that happening. This is real. Um, this is significant and this has probably happened to people around you. Constantly being told by people what a fantastic husband I had. During the 26 years that we were married, he was, um, always kind and gentle. So all in all, a, a good citizen. What kind of man rapes a woman? Uh, any man, normal men, it seems to me. I don't think there's any special kind of man that rapes a woman. It's certainly not the case that it's you know psychotic or deranged or disturbed individuals. We know that the psychological profile of men who do use sexual violence is pretty normal. It seems like they're all good fellas, uh, that they're decent citizens. It happens across all socio-economic um, levels. It's really helpful to get away from the stereotype of offenders that they're, um, you know, highly violent batterers or um, sick. Whereas, in fact, your research was showing very diverse offending behaviour where you could have men who could, in fact, be very charming and uh, behave very appropriately towards women in many circumstances, but then, on the other hand, uh, rape their intimate partners. I think the sense of entitlement that some men have 
That is, it's really reinforced at all levels of society that, you know, you've got a right to pursue getting laid, um, you know, against all objections. Um, really makes its way into to relationships. If I state the word rape, oh no, 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 it's just he won't take no for an answer. But a woman is property and that, um, you know, it, it's your right to have it. We actually lined up the statements of stranger rapists with partner rapists and you could see the anger, the sense of entitlement, um, you know, the, the desire for power over. The amazing thing about the research was all the women cited that their partners would not see what they had done as rape. He, my ex-husband does not recognise that as rape. The tears would be just rolling down my face and how he did not know the pain that I was in was, is beyond me because he would say that he could feel the cancer there. The vast majority of men who rape their wives according to legal definitions have, I wouldn't name it as rape. The most extreme examples of that are where men are uh, using severe physical violence against their female partners, you know, leaving bruises, uh, leaving lacerations, um, you know, breaking bones, being, you know, very seriously physically and psychologically violent, holding them down using weapons and still don't name it as rape. And I think that speaks to us of how profoundly some men have learned to kind of rape as sexuality. I think because it's been accepted in all communities, not just the Indigenous community. They also get higher levels of advice to put up with rape by their churches or families. When I told them that he was going to end up killing me, the person that I was speaking to at the time said, well at least you'll go to heaven then. I told the doctor that it hurt a lot. Could he please tell him not to do it? And he just said that women are built for sex. I think it's the doctor's relationship with the man which can interfere with the doctor's acceptance that, um, you know, that's been happening. It's tolerated within a marriage because that's part of the wife's uh, role is that she's to provide sex for the husband. I think another factor is a kind of widespread victim blaming that our, ours is still a sexist culture and we're, and we're still very prepared to believe that some women like to be beaten or that some women ask to be raped. This really underlying powerful, powerful message is that women are responsible. My mother didn't think it was wrong. She thought I was exaggerating and she just told me to go back home again and put up with it. And we learn through, uh, through media and through peers and so on that uh, pressuring or forcing someone into sex is not only legitimate but actually sexy, even exciting. If a minority of men still feel that this is okay within intimate partner relationships and that says something deeply worrying about the status of women in our society still. They might actually be much better off if they're walking down the street and it's a stranger who rapes them, they're going to get a lot more sympathy I think half the time or most of the time than they would, um, you know, from reporting their husband who everyone thinks is a great bloke. First of all, you didn't mean it, you are sorry. You want to, yeah, this is the guy that they've married or in a long-term relationship with. That's the person they, you know, love, I guess. Females will endure a lot to protect their, uh, their young. If they've chosen not to report because they have an awareness that there's stigma waiting, that there's disbelief waiting, that there's ridicule waiting, and possibly a traumatic process waiting, then no one has made a choice, a proper choice to not report. They've been forced into it. For so many women, they stand to lose so much by reporting it. You know, they're going to lose their input into the family farm, they're going to lose their standing in the community, they're going to lose face with their girlfriends, their in-laws, their children, their school. To name their partner as a rapist, um, the father of their children uh, could be acknowledged as a, a rapist. If there's any doubt, the jury will be instructed to come back with a finding of not guilty. And what I see is defence lawyers turn to a jury and say, look, look at her. Do you know why she's angry and flustered? because she's a liar. And we all said to each other, if you were the victims of sexual assault or if a family member was, would you put them through this system? And most of us said no.
We need to be reflecting that and putting more matters before the court so that they can make decisions to say that this kind of behaviour is unacceptable and the person you know, is charged and they are convicted and, and then I think serve a sentence. Encourage the woman to make that, come to that decision of her own, own accord and in her own time um, and obviously if she does decide to press charges or um, we will support her, her in that decision and through the court process as well. In civil litigation, a lot of matters settle out of court on a confidential basis. So in civil matters, it is not always the case that the matter would run to trial and women tend to um, give evidence in court far less often in a civil matter because it is highly likely that the matter would be resolved before trial. Women are very scared that they're not going to be believed. So this is one of the areas that we want to improve, the fact that health and community services listen, ask the right questions, and then show the woman that she is being believed. You know, an open question, what happened? How long ago did that happen? Usually get her to tell me a story. I'll sit there and listen to her story and let her tell it as much as she wants. Even if the doctor may think that he or she has done the right thing by giving, say, the number for CASA, if they haven't actually validated what the woman has said, the woman might have that number for cars but just think, oh, the doctor didn't believe me or the doctors dismissed me, therefore I'm not going to make that extra effort to go and ring that 1800 number. I certainly wanted it to be named and I certainly have heard very powerful statements from other women about having it named, so... Um, and naming is also part of ending it. What I really have learnt that it's my role as the doctor to actually ask that question and not necessarily wait until it's forthcoming from the woman. She said, that's rape. And I went, oh, oh, oh yeah, I, I guess it is. I guess there was a lot of denial, um, a lot of just shutting down within myself. There are a few steps that a health worker can take and they're quite simple. We say first, ask about the woman's safety. It can be as simple as, are you safe at home? We think that once she finds out that a woman isn't safe at home, she should name the problem. So if the woman says, my husband is beating me, my husband is having sex when I don't want to, they're often not going to use the words that we would use. We would say, name the problem. So do name the problem as domestic violence or sexual assault or rape. That helps the woman, it provides information. She can then define, redefine her own position. We'd also say offer her a referral. Make sure that she knows she can contact the Victorian Police Sex Offences Child Abuse Unit and that they're specialists. We'd also say give her the CASA number, which is quite simple, it's a statewide number. We'd also suggest that they offer her information about domestic violence services. We'd say she needs that information verbally and in written form because when people are discussing something distressing, they're not always going to recall what you've said later. So having something to take away is useful. And we'd say, follow up. Don't be afraid to bring it up. Ask her, say, now last time we met, we talked about lack of safety in your home. How are things now? Is there anything I can do? And those few steps, let the woman know she's believed. Even if she's not ready to take action right now, there'll come a time when she is ready, and that's what we'd encourage workers to do. I think it's time that the community found a way to listen to us as we name the problem. Mainstream and all communities coming together. You know, a woman from Sudanese community or an Indigenous woman saying that we're not going to put up with it. Men have an absolutely vital role to play in building a world free of men's violence against women. Because if one of those people, thought, if the doctor had have done something, if my mother had have done something, if the church had have done something, if the neighbours had have done something, things would not have got so bad. It only takes one person to stand beside you and say, no, this is not acceptable.